Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're on the test server again, and I wanna say a massive shout out and thank you to the community manager. She sent me over a copy of Thor, not on the main servers, the live servers, but on the test server. I would love one on main server, but that's not gonna happen. But fortunately, she sent me over one on the test server, and I wanna share with you guys a build that is extremely budget. If you're somebody who finished the Thor fusion, you can probably make a build like this or very close to this. So he has no books. He has masteries. I could take them off, but don't do that. That's just weird. Uh, so don't take that off the masteries. And his gear is pretty much trashed here. He has a defense ring, crit damage gloves that are okay. We do have some six-star pieces. They're all six-star pieces, but he's missing a shield. He has no necklace and no banner. So it's nothing that impressive. I am going to show you, however something very impressive after this and you can kind of decide where you fall as far as the builds but this is going to be one of the most impactful things you can do in your account and if you didn't already have somebody doing this role you need to get going with that now as of today because man you're going to be farming so much minotaur this is going to be extremely worth it and i want to explain as quickly as possible as clearly as possible how minotaur is one of the most important things you should be doing in your account First up, masteries will make the difference in your account of a champion being okay and a champion being actually very viable. Masteries are extremely important. Let's get that out of the way, very first thing. You need masteries. If you don't have them, you're struggling. You'll know the difference if you get them. Next up, when you do Minotaur, don't bring a full team of champions. There is no reason for that. That's like 2019 stuff. It's 2024, we can solo Minotaur. It's easy, trust me. When you solo Minotaur, do not use food champions like you would use in normal dungeons. This, bad idea. I've had people misconstrued what I was saying before and think this was a good idea. No, bad idea. Good idea is to fill this up with champions who you actually want to fill out their masteries on. Say we have four champions who we actually want to use in content. We actually want to use their masteries, everything. We want to build them. Those are the champions you want to use. For example, if this was, say, Trunda, Odin, Freya, and then Taras, all like level one, five-star champions, and I wanna use them all. Well, I would just come in here, let Thor solo Minotaur, all these champions have no gear on ideally, so they never get a turn, and when they're doing this, they're gonna be getting a split of the experience. So let's say, for example, we had a 100,000 XP pool. That's not the case, but for simple math, we're gonna do it based on that. If I had two champions in here, Thor is maxed, Drekstar is not. If I had two champions, well, that 100,000 HP pool, actually, let's just say 100. 100 HP, or sorry, 100 XP, very simple stuff. Divided by two, that's going to be 50. I don't know why I even need a calculator for that. That's going to be 50 experience wasted on Thor, 50 experience going to Drekstar. But now we throw in a Lugan. Now we have 33 experience going to Lugan, 33 going to Drekstar, and 33 going to Thor. So in this case, we're getting 33 wasted experience. Well, throw in Trunda, and now we have 25, 25, 25, 25. Now it's 25 being wasted on Thor. You can see every time we add another champion, we're getting less experience wasted. So if at all possible, you wanna have as many champions in here, which would be four, doing masteries at a time. So I've done videos on this before. I wanna just pull up the sheet that I used before. This is my previous video, like a year or so ago. And I wanna share with you guys this breakdown. So on average, it's gonna take about 2,100 energy. This could be energy from your inbox. It could be energy from your gyms. It doesn't matter, your daily energy. It's gonna be about 2,100 energy to get your masteries finished. That's gonna to convert to about 640 gems if you only wanted to use gems. Vice versa, you could just come in here and purchase your masteries for 800 gems. So right off the bat, just gem to energy ratio, doing Minotaur is cheaper. It's going to cost you less gems if you were just to convert one to one. But if you just do it over time, it's going to cost you no gems, just purely energy. So that's already better right off the bat. But not only are you getting the masteries finished up, but you're also going to be getting silver and experience. So you don't have to waste your... Experience. You don't have to waste your energy doing campaign runs to level up these champions. You don't have to waste your bruise to do the leveling of these champions. Ideally, you start them at one star, level 50, and then as they run through this, they're going to slowly level up. They're going to eventually get to level 50. If you have four champions in here, come in here, take them all up to six star, and then once they finish the mastery journey from there, if you have four champions, they're all going to finish 
about around level 50 or 55, I believe. But this example here I wanna share with you all is Thor doing this with the gear that I showed before. So the gear I showed before, you already know it's not that good. But he is just decimating these waves even with pretty poor gear. Because he has such good skills, he's not even booked by the way, so his cooldowns are longer than they should be. He has Lifesteal and Warmaster, so if Warmaster procs would get healed, it's all good stuff. But remember, this is like a poor case scenario. This is not a good setup whatsoever, but he's doing good. If you can get better gear than this, that's going to be ideal. But if not, well, you're, you still have a pretty good chance of being able to be successful at this. This build, though, is not going to be 100% successful. I'm sure some of these crits could kill him. I don't doubt that whatsoever. But what this is going to be is a consistent, well, if you gear him a little bit better and you book him and you know you actually invest in the champions, you put the soul on him. I'll show you in a second what it could be. But from this stage, with very mediocre at best lifestyle gear for the stats, with no blessing and no books, this is pretty daggone impressive. Now, I have the bless or the mastery on him that has a chance of placing leech on targets that he stuns. So he has a little bit more healing capabilities. But it's not required. You don't need that. He's going to be having plenty of Warmaster procs. He's going to be getting plenty of extra damage. But if you switch into the build that I'm about to show you, then you're going to be able to clear these waves so, so fast. So this is just like the beginner bare bone strategy. But if I had him on my account, which I don't, unfortunately, maybe I'll pull him eventually. If I had him on my account, I'll show you guys what I would be doing. So this is good. This right here is good. It's something you can improve on. Plenty of room to grow. But let's say we just went in only through on a five-star blessing. So you were grinding, you grind through the Thor event, you pick up your five-star blessing, you throw it on him, now you're looking good. You worked hard for that, and now you go in here, you pick the best blessing option for sure, which is going to be Nature's Wrath, because he's going to get more damage based on the amount of debuffs he places. He places plenty, so we pick up Nature's Wrath, we're good. Now, there is an argument for cruelty, but in this case, we're just going to use Nature's Wrath. So now his stats are already better, right? Just from that pickup... We get basically an amulet on him. We have a little bit better attack. We have better crit damage. We have more HP. He's looking better. But he's still not any different as far as the gear goes. But we come in here now, and let's see how sustainable, how tanky he is. Well, the first wave, we almost one-shot. The Trunda comes in almost one-shots it. Unfortunately, he goes his other AoE that first wave. But you can make presets. You can change it up a little bit. He uh, doesn't use anything there. No, no AoE skill to stun. He does a stun there. Very good. That's another AoE skill, get to the boss, doing pretty good. Now we're going to start ramping up that damage. We place the decreased speed. This isn't a fight where it's going to get maximum benefit from Nature's Wrath, unfortunately. But we are going to start doing pretty decent here. Honestly, it looks about, about the same time. We look a little safer. But when I switch his gear over, you're definitely going to see the difference. It's going to be incredibly fast. So this is 40, same thing as before, about 40 seconds. We'll try it one more time just for a little... Comparison's sake here. If we had Soul Reap, it would have been an even faster kill. I hate that he's using double AoEs there. But I think he would actually be faster than my Wukong for sure. But unfortunately, in case you guys don't remember, yeah, I don't have Thor on my account. But I guess that'll teach me not to miss a fusion. Either way, let's focus on the current moment. So now we're working through this. Almost at the 30 second mark. The more Warmaster procs we get, the faster this... Minotaur will die, which is just obviously better. If we booked him out, did the the presets for him, it'll be perfect. So honestly, about the same time, I'm kind of surprised. I figured it'd been faster, but it's definitely gonna be more secure this way. So now let's come in here and see. All right, let's go ahead and give him some books. You know, like you're gonna give the champion the stuff he needs to be good. It's ten books. Ten books is nothing for a legendary of this quality. And now let's come in here and do the old swap with my gear. We're going to go to this preset, and then we're going to throw in these pair of accessories. So now he's 260, 310% crit damage with 7,400 attack. This is a little bit more of a serious build. Now, unfortunately, he doesn't have uh, the six-piece Merciless I was hoping he would have. So we got to find a piece of Merciless gear to throw on him here. We'll just uh, throw this piece of Merciless gear on him. It's fine. We lose a lot of attack, but hey, it's okay. It's all right. We'll have like 6,500 attack, almost 7,000, somewhere around there. So we have 60, almost 7,000. We'll call it 7,000. But he has the 30%, 35% defense ignore. Looking pretty daggone good. This is probably the build that I would use. If I was, if I had Thor, <laughs> if I had him, I would use this build. 
So now we throw it in, no presets, it's not gonna matter. Like he's just going to absolutely decimate these waves, period. Seven seconds. Now Wukong may do it faster, not for sure. I mean, he is zooming, he is going pretty fast. I'd actually get Helm Smasher on him as well. Dang, no presets, 14 seconds. That is beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Now imagine if we took this and say we have a full party of champions. Okay. Say we need, how many runs is it going to be? So I said earlier it was going to be 150 runs per champion. So we have 300, 600 runs. 600 runs times what? 15 seconds each. 600 times 15. Divide that by, what, uh, 60? Is that right? Yeah. So 150 minutes. Divide by 60 again. Two and a half hours. Maybe that's right. It's a little bit longer because we got the slower animations of the champions. 25 seconds. Let's see if I was to go in here and make him have Helm Smasher instead of War Master. He's going to be better scaling with Helm Smasher once you get to the point where ignoring more defense is going to do more damage than the War Master cap. War Master is capped at a certain percentage of the target's HP. Or it's capped at 10% of the target champion's max HP or 4% of the target's max HP when attacking bosses. So at some point, you're going to be able to do more damage ignoring the defense than you would if you had War Master. So at this point in my gearing, Helm Smasher is just better for him. Unless I was ignoring 100% defense, then ex Flawless Execution could be better, possibly, or actually, yeah, or War Master. This case, it's just Helm Smasher. That's just going to be best for me. We're going to go ahead and throw in some more Masteries on him real quick. Let's see what we got here. And uh, yeah, we'll get the Life Drink real quick. So now, jump back in a Minotaur one more time to see what's going on. Absolutely obliterating the waves once again. Not a surprise. We could throw one Soul Reap if you wanted to do it even faster, I'm sure. We zap the minnow. Hit smack the minnow. Champions are a little too fast to do it. Super speed. But I mean, you're looking at some extremely fast runs. Even with full squad of champions. We have 25 champ or sorry, 25 champs. We have four champs in here. 28 seconds. We'll call it 30 seconds. So 600 runs times 30 seconds divided by 60 for the minutes divided by 60 for the hours, five hours. Set this overnight. Granted, you'll need a lot of energy. You'll need two, four, six, eight, um, 8,400. Call it say 9,000 energy. I need close to 9,000 energy, but you can finish all these up overnight. Easy peasy. So he's a champion. Obviously he can do campaign farming as well. Like campaign's not even a question. This is super easy stuff here. So chapter 12, stage 6, I believe is typically what's the most for the experience. We'll go recently used, throw him in there. I mean, it's going to be a cakewalk for Thor. He's a beast. Very good farming champion. Very, very good wave clear champion. Like, almost on the level of Seer, honestly. For the waves that don't have, like, extremely high HP numbers, he's just going to blow right through them. We can even come over to Ice Golem and see. I did this test before. Granted, you will need, like, some uh, decreased defense probably. But if we just did this, like, we just did Ghostborn plus him, maybe even just Thor. I'm not really even sure, honestly. Let's see. Okay, not by himself, but this will kill him. Yeah, wipes them all out. So he does need decreased defense, but that's all he needs. That's uh, quite acceptable. Now, if you just want him to clear the waves and get to the boss, you can do that too. You can do that fine. Like, say you want Thor plus Artak to just do all the boss. Well, just do that. No. You can do whatever you want with him because he's just going to control the waves, smack the waves, get, escort Artak to the boss. If you had other champions in there farming food, you're good. So he zaps that wave. He doesn't one-shot the waves, but he kills the waves. Then, of course, you got to make sure Artak can survive once you get to the boss. But, I mean, life's either easy, guys. If you got Thor, congratulations. Awesome, awesome champion. I'll be doing some more content with him while I'm on the test server with him. But I really just wanted to make the video showcasing him in Minotaur because Minotaur is such a efficient thing you should be doing in the game. It saves you gems. It makes you silver because you're making a million silver each run, each champion. So you're making a million per champion. There's four champions you're making 4 million silver, almost 5 million, almost 5 million silver from getting four champions masteries done. Some pretty nice stuff. So guys, Build your Thor with mediocre gear. Finish up farming your masters on champions you've neglected for a long time. And enjoy. That's really all there is to it. Awesome champion. 
relatively easy to build. That was a pretty budget setup, I believe. But good luck going out and build that, guys. Let me know where you use your Thor. And yeah, that's a lot, guys. Thank you all for watching. I love and appreciate all of you. I'll catch you in the next one.